If you're working on a project that involves controlling relays with a Arduino or other microcontroller, you will almost definitely need to use a transistor uh, as a driver for the relay, and that's because the Arduino can only source about 20 milliamps, and your relay coil may take more than that. I have a meter hooked up here to show how much current this relay takes, and there it is, almost 250 milliamps, which is more than 10 times what the Arduino can source. So in order to do that, I had to hook up a uh, transistor to the Arduino pin, and that's what's going on down here. Let's go to the whiteboard, and we can talk about how the circuit works. So the circuit that's used is, at the heart of it is a transistor, and it just acts like a switch. So the relay is connected between this, what I've labeled OC, which means open collector, and 12 volts. So the relay coil would be between 12 volts and this. And what happens is that whenever the relay switch is on, it allows a path of current from 12 volts through the coil to ground. And when the relay is, or sorry, when the transistor's off, there's no path of current and the relay switches off and you're able to control the transistor using a very small signal from this, what I've labeled CTL line. And you, in order to do that, you just need a 1K resistor, and this 10K resistor pulls the base of the transistor to ground so that whenever nothing is connected to the control line, it defaults to off. Okay, uh, the other rather important part is this diode up here, and that is called a flyback diode. And the reason is whenever the transistor, or sorry, the relay coil um, disengages after it's been on, it will produce a voltage that is opposite to the way that uh, is normally, or the opposite to the way that it was being energized. So if before, if current was flowing through the relay down here, whenever you turn it off, right when it's turning off, the magnetic field collapses on the coil and it creates a little burst of energy, a little burst of current uh, going this way and it's gonna try to yank current up through the transistor um, in this path, which is really hard on the transistor and it could destroy it. Um, it's good at conducting current in one direction but it's not meant to go the other way. So what this diode does is it creates, uh, it actually creates a short circuit that uh, any current going that direction is just gonna be uh, shorted and eliminated. However, it will, it will allow current going up in the opposite direction. So that's called a flyback diode, and these are all the components that you need to control a relay. So I guess the final thing you have to think about is what type of transistor to use in your circuit, and that will just depend on how much current your relay draws. Uh, the coil the relay draws when it's on and for that you'll have to do some testing with a meter and then also look at the data sheet of your transistor. You saw that that was pulling 250 milliamps. My go-to transistor is the uh, 3904. It is super super cheap, super common and it's in this TO92 package and they're great for a lot of things but the data sheet says it has a maximum current draw of 200 milliamps, which is really going to be a problem for us if we need it to be able to do 250. It's definitely going to get hot and it will probably burn. This is a similar transistor. It's a 2N2222 and they come in several styles of packages. This is looks like a 3904 and this one has a metal can around it for heat dissipation, but this guy is rated for 600 milliamps which is plenty if, for our relays that are drawing 250. So when you're choosing your relays, just read your data sheet, test your relays to see what they need, and you should be able to do a good job. Hope this video has been useful. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.